Tonight we're going to be speaking about dreams in Jewish tradition. The latest figures that I heard, incidentally it's also mentioned in the Gemara Shabbos, is that a person spends 25 years of time, 25 years of life, sleeping. Six years of which are dreaming. So with that much time in our life dedicated to such a thing, it would be nice to know a little bit, what are they all about? What is a dream? And where does it come from? Do dreams have hidden messages? And what can we learn from dreams? So dreams have fascinated civilization since the beginning of time. Everyone has always searched to find what's the nature, the purpose, and the interpretation of their dreams. The concept is documented as old as writing itself. Ancient Mesopotamia has documents. Ancient Sumerian texts, Egyptian texts, Greek texts. The Chinese, the ancient Chinese had rituals where they would speak to deceased ancestors. Native Americans had certain rites of passages that involved dreams and communication through them. One of the oldest full works of interpreting dreams is from the Assyrian dream book, which dates back to the 9th century BCE. In early societies, in fact, people couldn't even distinguish the difference between reality and the dream world. They felt that the dream world was just an extension of real life. Interestingly enough, many philosophers also had the same idea. Many philosophers thought to themselves, is this the real world? Or is the dream world the real world? Think about it. It'll blow your mind. Is this world the real world? Or is that world the real world? I remember hearing about a certain philosopher who had a dream that he was, every night he had a dream that he was a butterfly. So he began to wonder whether he was him or whether he was a butterfly dreaming about him. Think about that for a while. There are many famous dream premonitions that are well known. James Watson, who became very famous because he discovered the double helix structure of the DNA, he came to this epiphany after having a dream about a double staircase. Elias Howe, who was the inventor of the sewing machine, had a dream one night that he was being attacked by cannibals, and in the hands of these cannibals were spears, and the shape of the spear was the shape that he used to describe, to, to, to create the sewing needle. Most famously is a dream that President Abraham Lincoln had just before his assassination. He dreamt that he was, came to a clearing and there was a casket, a man in burial shrouds, and thousands of onlookers veering to see if they can get a glimpse. And he, in his dream, walked over to one of the generals, and the general informed him that the president had been shot. Modern dream study, okay, onirology, was probably most recently started by Sigmund Freud. 1900 published a book entitled The Interpretation of Dreams. He describes in there that all details of a dream have significance. Every single detail. If you dream about a lamp, that means something. If you dream about a table, that means something. Every detail, everything has a symbol. Interestingly enough, he brings down in his book a rabbi from the 14th century, Shlomo Almoli, who created one of the largest dream interpretation books in the 14th century, and writes about his tremendous respect. So when Freud writes about his tremendous respect that he has for the rabbinic tradition of interpreting dreams. 
Sigmund Freud was criticized very much in his lifetime, and more so even afterwards, that not everything in a dream has meaning. The later psychologists Adler and Jung, they also said that dreams are showing on our tendencies that we have throughout the day. They, they, they describe certain feelings that we can't expose or that we're scared to expose or that, that we don't know are even there during the day. It's interesting. American psychologist Calvin Hall, in the 1950s, okay, he did a research project. He collected dreams from 50, 50, 50,000 people around the world and made a very interesting discovery. What was his discovery? That most people around the world dream of the same things. Each dream is a mixture of our biological instincts, cultural assumptions, and personal experiences. Let's take some common dreams and their interpretations. For example, everybody's probably had all of these dreams, okay? Anyone ever have a dream where they're being chased by a person? Someone's chasing them, it's either a villain, a wild animal, a robber, you know, someone's coming to get them. Or a wild animal, a dog, a rabid dog. Everyone's had this dream, right? So what the modern dream interpretation would say, what would they say in the world of psychology? They said that person is feeling threatened by someone or they have a strong emotion. They're being threatened by either somebody else, they feel threatened by someone in their past day or by a strong emotion that they had. Anyone ever have the dream that they're falling? Either falling from a building, falling off a cliff, Falling some, he's falling somewhere. Head nods. Or you're sinking in water or drowning. And then there's the opposite, where you're flying. Everyone have that dream? So the one that where, you're, where you're sinking or you're falling, okay, what they say is that you feel insecure for at that moment or there's a time period in your life that there's some sort of insecure event going on. Um, you feel like you have no support. There's nothing upholding you. If you're drowning, sometimes that can mean that, you know, that you're feeling overwhelmed. This is what modern psychologists, those who ascribe to dreams have meaning, this is how they, they would interpret this dream. Next, very famous dream. A lot of people, I'm sure, have had this one. Anyone ever have a dream where you either show up at work or show up at school and you're not fully clothed or not clothed at all? You're missing either or you show up in your pajamas. Yeah, I know, I know. What, what the, the translation, the interpretation of this dream is that they say that, you'll feel, that you've been feeling exposed or vulnerable in your walking daily life. You might have felt awkward or you may be scared that you've revealed too much information about yourself to somebody. Anyone ever have a dream that they're driving a car or they're in a bus and it's out of control? A lot of people, right? So it's, again, you feel like everything in your life is rushing at you and that you're about to crash. Very, very, you could see the parallel that this symbol in the dream correlates with this day activity or this feeling that I'm feeling right now. We'll do a few more. You ever miss a bus or miss a train or miss something that you needed to catch while in a dream? It's talking about a person who um, feels like they can't make a connection. They, they fail to make a connection in some way. Maybe a business deal fell through. Maybe you had trouble communicating something to a friend or to a boss. And the last one we'll talk about is that a person is lost either in a building, they're lost in the woods, they're lost in the forest. All right? Barbara says she just had that dream last night, right? So uh, maybe I should hold off in the interpretation. It's a person's, for whatever reason, they're feeling maybe lost or trapped based on something that happened during the day. So we see a very clear trend. Many in the, in the realm of those people, those psychologists who ascribe power to dreams, that dreams are revealing, 
say that they have a parallel of what you were thinking about during the, the rest of the day. Now then there are those who came later, Hobson and Macaulay in the 70s, who said dreams have absolutely no meaning. They're just random brain waves clearing themselves out. They have no meaning whatsoever. So you have a divided, you have two schools of thought, divided opinion. So the question is, what does the Torah think about this? What does Judaism say about dreams and their meaning? Do they have meaning? Or are they just vague imagina imagination? Find out next time.